the New York Times is trash. Now, you may have noticed that the so-called paper of record isn't exactly doing fair reporting. Uh, on a range of different issues, progressive issues, uh, economic issues, but also on uh, transgender issues, LGBTQ issues, non-binary, non-gender conforming. In fact, they've uh, recently been called out for that specific reason. Around 200 past and present contributors to the New York Times have signed a letter calling them out for anti-trans coverage. So now... The letter cites numerous examples of how the paper's positions and frames transgender people in a negative light. They point out, uh, uh, now, uh, it also points out how the Times reporting is used by anti-LGBTQ state lawmakers and other officials to support anti-trans legislation. Here's a couple of examples of that. Last year, they write, Arkansas Attorney General filed an amicus brief in defense of Alabama's Vulnerable Child Compassion and Protection Act which would make it a felony punishable by up to 10 years imprisonment for any medical provider to administer certain gender-affirming medical care to a minor. That includes, of course, certain hormones, puberty blockers, uh, that diverges from their sex assigned at birth. Uh, now, the brief cited three different New York Times articles to justify its support of the law. Emily Bazelon's The Battle Over Gender Therapy, Azeen Garashi's doctors debate whether trans teens need therapy before hormones, and Ross, oh, Ross Tutat. Oh boy, that guy. Uh, how to make sense of the new LGBTQ culture war. Hmm. So, as recently as February 8, 2023, attorney David Begley's invited testimony to the Nebraska state legislature in support of a similar bill approvingly cited the Times reporting and relied on its reputation as the quote-unquote paper of record to justify criminalizing gender-affirming care. So, uh, of course, look, the reality is gender-affirming care saves lives, uh, trans kids' lives. So, now, are there risks uh, concerning puberty blockers and hormones? Yeah, of course. Like any chemical, right? There are always potential risks. And I'm not against, you know, studying and, and trying to find ways to mitigate those risks. But again, those risks are, they, they basically are dwarfed in comparison to the fact that you are saving trans children's lives. Okay? This is why uh, all the major medical organizations in the United States support gender-affirming health care. But see, the New York Times, however, mm, they do not. But to be fair with the New York Times, uh, they seem to have been on the wrong side of history a lot. Let me give you some examples here. Uh, the letter cites homophobia. In 1963, the New York Times published a front page story with the title, Growth of Over Homosexuality in City Provokes Wide Concern. In it, it is stated that Homosexuals saw their own sexuality as an inborn incurable disease, one that scientists, the Times announced, now thought could be cured. Wow. Wow! In 1975, the Times also published an article by Clifford Jair about a, uh, what he calls a queer cruise, featuring a sadomasochistic fashion show. Uh, sounds lovely, actually sexual anarchy uh <laughs> on the urging of his shocked mother times publisher arthur oaks Sulzberger sent down an order to quote unquote stop covering these people hmm, gee, i wonder uh wonder how he feels about uh the lgbtq community hmm now the letter uh, and there's more you know examples of this in the letter but it closes with this quote there is no rapt reporting on the thousands of parents who simply love and support their children or on the hardworking professionals at the New York Times enduring a workplace made hostile by bias. A period of forbearance that ends today. Ooh. And again, these are people that contributed to the New York Times. And they are, even there, they're tired of the editor's shit. That's what's going on. And so... Good. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. 
Now, as far as the Times, look, they've always been conservative, okay? Uh, now they're veering even further into the right-wing culture wars. And, of course, the problem there is presenting more hateful opinions is valid. They've already always supported the right wing when it comes to anything economic, of course. Oh, yes, uh, rich people, should, should they get more money? Well, of course, the New York Times, paper of record. Should we deregulate industry? The New York Times says, of course we should. Oh, yes. Mm, uh, you know, we should also uh, deregulate media as well. Uh, but we will never, ever allow independent media to flourish and... Uh, we will make sure to crush progressives and never have them on. Oh, a, 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 a progressive wants to write for the New York Times? No, <laughs> never. Never will never happen. No. We're the paper of record. We can't allow the riffraff and the trash to write articles. No. Speaking of record, again, they've got a record to be ashamed of. And by the way, Following this call out, okay, uh, I want to show you what the New York Times did. One of the one of the first headlines to come out after the call out. Ready for it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, and then, by the way, uh, Alejandro uh, uh, Car uh, Caraballo also tweeted this out, by the way. Uh, this is... Hold on. So, uh, the first, the top one is... Uh, these are both the same article. So, the top one was the original headline. The relentless attack on trans people is an attack on all of us. Wonderful. Great. Oh, that's a great headline. It's a great article, right? The editors went through and changed it to the bottom. There is no dignity in this kind of America. Why, why would you take any mention of transgender people out of your headline? Why, why would you do that? That seems rather strange. Look, what they're doing is that they're making their mark as a deeply right-wing transphobic publication. That's the New York Times. Way, way to go. Way to go, New York Times. You suck. Paper of record, my ass.